Hello. In this section, we're going to look at one last topic from uh, statistics. And that last topic is something called the normal distribution. Uh, and this is something that comes from when we're looking at large populations. Um, it's often called the standardized curve or the bell curve. Uh, and we're going to look at how that's used and some things that we can do with it in this section. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here's the notes, and this is um, part two of the notes, just because it was a little longer, so I thought I'd just make it its own section. And what I want to start by looking at is just what the, the normal distribution or the normal curve looks like. Alrighty, so this is the normal curve, or sometimes you'll see it called the bell curve, and it just looks like this. Now notice I have some numbers along here at the bottom, and I'll talk about those in just a minute. Um, but first of all, I want to talk through where does this curve come from. And basically, uh, this curve comes from histograms with large populations that are centered evenly around an, oops, an average or mean. Okay, so we've seen histograms before where we had uh, things that were happening a certain number of times, and that's what this is. It's really just a, a histogram that, by looking at such a large population, has, um, has sort of um, evened out over time and made this, this nice shape. All righty. Um, and what these numbers down here at the bottom represent is this number right here, since we say that this is centered evenly around the average or the mean, this center point right here is, that's the mean. And these numbers on either side are standard deviations. And we talked about this in previous sections. All right, this curve is, has you know, standard deviations involved on either side. We, when we have positive, that means we're to the right of the mean or larger than the mean. And when we have negatives, that means we're, we're smaller than the mean. But those are our, our standard deviations. And then the area underneath this curve represents how much data is in certain ranges. So the area underneath this curve represents um, what amount of data is in that range. So notice we have this line right here and all we've got this data over here to the right hand side and since this is evenly distributed, all right, that means that there is 50% of the data that's on either side of the mean. And we can also split up um, each section and kind of look at how much is in each section, and we'll do that in a little bit. Um, these little pieces at the end are called the tails. And notice that there's not much data that, that is uh, very far away from the mean. Okay, so um, what are some types of, of uh, data that would have this curve? Well, just some that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, if we looked at the heights of people in the U.S., all right, those heights, you know, you've got an average height and you've got some people that are taller than that and people that are shorter than that. You've got some really tall people that would fit out in the tail. You've got some really short people that would fit out in this tail. Okay, so heights would be one. 
Um, weights. How much people weigh is another one that would probably fit into this. Test scores. When you look at standardized test scores like um, um, the Ames test or the um, SAT or those kind of or ACT, those kind of scores have a mean and standard deviations involved with them because there are large numbers of people that take those. Um, IQ tests are another one that uh, that are set up so they, they follow this normal distribution. Okay, so those are some places uh, where these types of data come, come into play. Some properties of the normal distribution. I've got five properties here. The first property is that the normal curve, and we'll call it the normal curve or normal distribution, uh, the normal curve um, is bell-shaped. It's always going to have this upside down bell shape to it. And there's actually a formula for it, but it's pretty darn complicated, so I'm not going to um, waste your time with it. The, um, the highest point on the curve is the mean. And we saw that up above. The highest point was where the mean was, right there. Okay. Um, number three, <coughs> the mean, median, and mode are all the same. And if you go back and look at that curve, you can kind of see why that's true. All right, we, we define this to be the mean right in the middle. But if you look at the median, if this is evenly spread out on either side, you've got the same number of points over here, same number of data points over there, as you have over here. So that means that this is the middle of all of those data points. You can also see that it's the data point that occurs most often. So it's also the mode. All right, number four is the curve is symmetric with respect to the mean. All right, it's the same on either side. Okay, and lastly is that the total area under the curve is 1, which means that represents 100% of the data. So if you find an area that is um, smaller than that, like let's say up here, we said that this is 50% of the of data points right in here, well that area must be 0.5 in order for that to work. Okay, so that's the basics of what the normal distribution curve is. So let's look and see if we can find some ways of dealing with this. And I've got some example problems I want to look at. So the first one says, find the areas underneath the standard normal curve. And I want to find it between, and now I've got this Z. And I got z equals 0 and z equals 1.3. Now, what does z mean? Well, a z score represents the number of standard deviations. from the mean that you're looking at. Okay, so the z-score tells you how far away you are from the mean, the number of standard deviations away from the mean. If you have a negative, a negative z-score, you are to the left 
of the mean a positive is to the right. And we saw that when we first looked at our at our z z table, all right? Or z score. I'm I'm sorry, our normal curve. We had negatives over here and positives over here. It just tells us which side of the um, of the standard of the mean that we are. Okay? So that is what a z score is. So what I'd like to know <clears throat> is I'd like to know the area underneath the z underneath the standard normal curve between a z of 0 and a z of 1.3. So a z of 0, so here's what our normal curve like looks like. Here is a z of 0, and out here somewhere is going to be our z of 1.3. And what I want to do is I want to find this area. So how would I go about doing that? Well, we actually have two ways of doing that. The first way we can do it is by using a chart. And I'm going to show you the chart, um, and it's in your book. So let me go over and open that up. Hold on. Okay, so I've gone to the textbook here, and I'm on page 754. And this is a table of z-scores and the area that is associated with them. Um, so if you look at that table, what you've got is you've got a z-score, and then you've got the area that is between a z-score of 0 and a z-score of, say, um, 1.12. There is 0.369, um, or 36.9% of the data, is between the mean and 1.12 standard deviations away. So that's how this table is set up. So we go back to our problem, which was we want to find the area between z equals 0 and z equal 1.3. Well, that's the way this table is set up. So it's, it's quick and easy. All we need to do is go to the 1.3 for the z, which is down here, and look at the area that's associated, which is 0.403. And that's going to be our answer. So if we go back here, okay. From the z-score chart, our answer is going to be an area value of 0.403. And what that tells you is that 40.3% of the data is between the mean and 1.3 standard deviations to the right of that mean. Now, the other way you can do it is by using the calculator. And the calculator has some stuff about normal distributions. So let me show you where that is on the calculator. And if you go to the calculator, notice down here, above the VARs, which is variables, is DISTR, which is distribution. So if I hit second and VARs, I will get distributions. And the one I'm going to be interested in for right now is normal CDF. All righty. Normal CDF. So I'm going to choose normal CDF. And now it's asking me for a list of values. So the way this is going to work, let me write this down over here, is I'm going to use the normal CDF function. And that normal CDF is going to ask me for four pieces of information. The first thing I need to put in is the low value. Okay. The next piece of information I need to put in is the high value. Then I need to put in what the mean is. And then I need to put in the standard deviation. Okay, so that's the normal CDF. So for our case, what I'm dealing with here since I'm dealing between just a standard normal curve between a z value of 0 and a z value of 1.3, I'm going to put in normal CDF. My low value is my z of 0. My high value is my z of 1.3. 
my mean, since I'm dealing with a standard normal curve, my mean is always zero, and my standard deviation is always one for the standard normal curve. Okay, so this is standard normal. Now it might be different later on, and we'll see some cases where it is different. But if we plug all that in, so I've got normal CDF, I'm going to plug in uh, zero, and then a comma, 1.3, comma, 0, comma, 1. Notice I get 0 0.403. All right. I do not care which way you do it. Um, you can do it either way. On the final, which is where this is going to show up again, um, you will have the Z table. If you'd like to use the Z table, that's fine. Or if you'd like to use your calculator, that's fine as well. I do not care which way you do it. Okay, so let's look at the next one here. The next one says we want to find the area underneath the standard normal curve between z equal negative 1 and z equal 2.6. So if I do that according to the z table or the z chart, okay, what I need to do, so let me go back to that. Okay. Remember, this is the area between the, 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 um, the mean and some distance away from the mean. So we've got a z-score of 2.6. So I'm going to go to 2.6. So I'm going to arrow down here a little bit. And there's 2.6. I get 0.495. But that is only the distance or the area between z equals 0 and 2.6. I also want to find the area be between 0 and negative 1. So in order to do that, I'm going to arrow down further. And this 1 is the same as what the area is going to be for negative 1, because remember, it's symmetric about it. So the area between 0 and negative 1 is going to be 0 0.341. And what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to add those two values. Okay, so I'm adding those two values. That first one is going to give me between 0 and 2.6. The next one's going to give me between negative 1 and 0. Okay, and when I add those together, um, I get an area of 0.836, which means that 83.6% of the data is between one standard deviation below and 2.6 standard deviations above. Now, if we do that on the calculator, we're going to do normal CDF. This time, our low value is negative 1. Our high value is 2.6, and then since it's a standard normal, our mean is 0 and our standard deviation is 1. So I'm going to go to the calculator. I'm going to plug all that in. So I have negative 1, comma, 2.6, comma, 0, comma, 1. And I get 0.8366. Okay. Notice that's going to round up to 0.837, but you know, we aren't close. Alrighty, let's look at the next one. Next one's a little bit different. We want to say what percent of the data, or what is the area, above z equal 1.45. So if we're looking at the z table here, here's 1.45. We want the area that's above here. So what we need to do with that is we need to start by saying, OK, I need to figure out how much is to the between. If I can find out how much is between z equals 0 and z equals 1.45, then I can take that value and subtract it from 0.5, because I know 50% of the data is to the right-hand side of z equals 0. And so if I take that 50% minus the amount that I had in this piece, 
All right, that'll give me how much is left above there. So let's see how I would do that. Okay, so I go back to my table. And I wanted um, 1.45, so that's right here, it's 0.427. Alrighty. So I'm going to take, and I'm going to do 0.5 minus 0.427, which is going to give me 0 0.073, or 7.3%. Per, if I do that with a calculator, normal CDF, and this one's going to be a little bit differently, different, because our low value now is 1.45. Our high value, well, we're going off to infinity. Well, we can't put infinity in the calculator, so we put in the largest value that we can, and the largest value is 1 times 10 to the 99th. But the way we put that in the calculator is we put 1, and then we push the EE button, which allows us to do exponentials like this or, or scientific notation, and then 99. And again, it's standard normal, so I put in 0 and 1. So if we do that real fast, let me just show you that here. Okay, so I'm going to uh, go to distribution, normal CDF. I'm going to put in uh, 1.45, comma, then I want E, and then notice right here above the comma is EE. -E. And so if I hit second and EE, -E, it'll put in that E, and that's my way of putting in scientific notation. I'm going to put in 99, comma, 0, comma, 1. Notice that gives me 0 0.0735, which is what I had here. Okay. Now, you try the next one and see what you get either way, and, uh, and then we'll come back and check it in just a second. Okay, so here's what I got. Since we are below z equal negative 0.64, again, I'm going to go between z equals 0 and z equal negative 0.64, which the z value for, for 0.64 is this or the A value for Z of 0.64 is this. And that's going to be below. So if I think of my curve, I have 50% that's here. Okay. And I have a Z right here. And so I have 50% that's on this side. This A value that I got is how much is in here. So if I take 50%, minus this value, I'll get what's below there. Okay, and that gives me 0.261. Or if I do it with normal CDF, again, I'm going from all the way down here at negative infinity, so we plug in negative infinity as negative 1 E99, 2, negative 0.64, 0, and 1. All right, that's what we get for that one. We can also go the other way. Here I was given a z-score and I was finding the area we can also go from having the area to finding the z-score. So if I say that 24% of the area is below that score, all right, what I'm looking at is okay, there's 50% to this side, and if I've got 24% that is below, that means I've got 26% that's right here. So I have an A value of 0.26, and I need to find the Z value that goes along with that. And notice it's on the left-hand side, so it's going to be negative. So if I go back to my table, and I find a, uh, an area score of 0.26, so up here at the very top, looks like that's pretty darn close to 0.71. So that would be my answer. All right, so my z would be negative 0.71. Or there's another way to do it. You could also do it on the calculator. 
And on the calculator, what we're going to use is something called the um, inverse normal. All right. In other words, that's going to give us the inverse, which is we're, we're putting in the area and getting the z-score out instead of putting in the z-score and getting the area out. And the way that's set up is we put in the low value. Oops, sorry. The area, the area to the left. Ah, let me try again here. So the inverse norm is going to be area to left. and then the mean and the standard deviation. Okay. So for this problem, we would do inverse norm. We want to know the area to the left. The area to the left is 24%, so that would be a 0.24. Our mean, again, we're dealing with a standard norm here. So our mean is 0 and our standard deviation is 1. So let me show you that on the calculator here. Again, this is going to be in the same area as the last one was under distribution. So I'm going to go to distribution. And here it is, inverse normal. I'm going to plug in 0.24, comma, 0, comma, 1. And I get negative 0.71 when I round it off. Same thing as I got here. All righty. All right, let's look at this last one, and then we'll move on to some other stuff. So let's say we have 85% of the area is above that score. Well, if we draw a quick picture of what we're looking at here. Here's zero. Okay, 85% of the area is above that score, so we know 50% is above here. What that means is I'm looking down here. I want 15% on this side and the other 35% over here. So 50 plus 35 would give me 85%. So what that means is I need to find a z-score that corresponds to an a value of 0.35. And I know, because of where it's located, that it's going to be a negative. All righty. So I could go ahead and, and look that up on the chart, and I'll let you do that on your own. Or we could do it um, with the inverse norm and see what we get. And the inverse norm, this time, the area to the left, when we drew this out, we had an area to the left of 15%. So I'm going to make that a 0.15. And again, it's standard normal, so it's going to be a 0 for our mean and a 1 for our standard deviation. And that gives us a z-score, and it's negative like it should be, 1.04. So that should be 0.15 and a 0 and a 1. So that's how we go back and forth between areas under the curve and um, z-scores. Now the next thing they're going to talk about is one of the properties of the normal distribution, and that is that it, it usually follows this pretty close rule. Okay, it says 68%. It's called the 68.95.99.7 rule, and what that means is that means that within one standard deviation of the mean, we have 68% of the data. So in other words, if I go from here to here. In that region, I have 68% of the data is within one standard deviation. So that means to the left, since this is symmetric, I'm going to have 34%. And to the right, I'm going to have 34%. The next number is 95. What that means is within two standard deviations, so I'm going to write it down here this time. Within two standard deviations, we've got 95% of the data. So if you look at that, what do we have left? Well, we've got 68 uh, from 95, and that gives us uh, 27. So if we split that 27% evenly on either side, that means we get 13.5% over here and 13.5% over here. Okay. And then the last one 
says that you've got 99.7% within three standard deviations. Okay, so if we look down here, within three standard deviations, we've got 99.7%. Alrighty. So, how much is left? Well, we've got 4.7%. So when we split that in half, uh, we get 2.35%. So in here is going to be 2.35%. And in here is going to be 2.35% of the data. Notice what we have left is we have 0.3% of the data that's, that's outside of the whole thing. Okay, so we have 0.3 left. So that means you've got 0.15 that's out here in this tail. And you've got 0.15 that's out on that tail. And again, these are just estimates okay, to, to make it easy to work with. And, and what you can do is, once you're, you know what you're dealing with for your particular problem, you can actually replace these numbers with your mean, what your number is within one standard deviation above, what your number is within one standard deviation below, et cetera, et cetera, and then use these percentages to answer some questions. And we'll see how that works in just a second. So I'm going to leave that up here so I can come back to it. So the importance of the normal model is that we can use many data sets um, that, are, that are described nicely by it. Um, and I've talked about these already, heights, um, weights, IQ scores, SAT scores, body temperature is another one. Um, that's where they get, you know, your average temperature should be about this. Okay, but some people are going to be hotter, a little hotter. Some people are going to be a little colder. All right. So let's look at the example of how tall, short, or average you are. And it says, the heights of females in the United States follows an approximately normal distribution with a mean of 64 and a standard deviation of 2. So that means instead of having these numbers, we can replace them with what we're dealing with. So we can say that our mean is 64. Our standard deviation is 2, which means that if you go 2 above, this would be 66 inches. When you go 2 below, you'd be at 62 inches. And then you keep going out by 2 inches each time you move out by a standard deviation. So this would be 68 inches. This would be 70 inches. This would be 60 inches. And this would be 58 inches. And then you could actually go back to what we had up here, and you could put in those percentages. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I've got that easy reference for me. So that's 34% of the data is here. 13.5% of the data is here. And I'm going to add these together and just say instead of 2.35 and then another 0.15, I'm going to say that this is going to be 2.5. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here, 34%, 13.5%, and 2.5%. And now I'm going to use that to answer some questions. So what percent of the females are between 62 and 66 inches tall? Well, here's 62 and here's 66. The percentages, we can just add those up, and we'll get 68%. Okay. What percent of the females are shorter than 62 inches? Well, that would be all that are in this direction, so it would be 13.5% that are between 62 and 60, and another 2.5% that are below 60. So when I add those two together, what do I get? I get 16%. Alrighty. What percent of the females are taller than 60 inches? Well, if I want taller than 60 inches, that means I'm starting here and moving all the way that direction. So it would be 13.5% plus 34 plus 34 plus 13.5 plus 2.5, which is 97.5. Or you could say, hey, I know that underneath this whole curve is 100%. And you would just take out the percent that are below and you would also get the same answer. Okay, So when you're starting from um, some problem where you are given that it's a normal distribution, 
and you're given a mean and you're given a standard deviation, what I would do is I would draw this picture and put in your percentages and put in your numbers and then you can answer a lot of those questions pretty quickly and easily. Let's go to another one that's similar, only this is dealing with males. The heights of males in the United States follows an approximately normal distribution. This time the mean is 69, so I'm going to replace that with 69 inches. And the standard deviation is 2.25 inches. So that means if I go one above, I'm going to have um, 71.25. Alrighty. And if I go two above, I'm going to get uh, 73.5. And if I go above that, I'm going to get, I don't need to go more than two, I don't think. Um, if I go two below, I'm going to get um, see, 66.75. Whoops, that's inches, not ten. If I go two below, I'm going to get, um, why is my brain not working tonight, 64.5. If I go two below that, I'm not going to worry about that one. Okay? Now, we can now answer the questions, what percentage of males are between 64.5 inches and 71.3 inches tall? Or 71.25 inches? Let's make that 0.25. Okay? So here is, let's see, we said this is 34. This is 34. This is 13.5. This is 2.5. This is 13.5. 2.5. So here's 64.5, here's 71.25, so it'd be 13.5 plus 34 plus 34, which is going to give us 81.5%. Okay, and then what percentage of the males are taller than 71.3%? or 71.25%, sorry, 71.25 inches. Um, that would be this number and that number. So 13.5 plus 2.5 gives us 16%. Okay, so that's how we can handle some of those where we are given, um, we're given a, a normal distribution as well as a mean and a standard deviation. And the numbers we're looking at fit along these standard deviations. Now what if they don't fit along those standard deviations? Well that's okay, we can use techniques we've looked at already uh, to do that. So, let's look here and say where do you fit within the distribution of heights for your gender? Some questions we can answer are listed below. Use your calculator to answer the following. So one, what percentage of the population is shorter than I am and what percent of the population is taller than I am? So what I'm going to use for this is I'm going to use my own self. Alrighty. So if myself, I am five foot nine, I mean sorry, five foot ten, which is seventy inches. Okay. And I'm um, that in, in shoes, and I, I wanted to use that because it, it doesn't match up with the mean. Okay, so I'm five foot ten, which is seventy inches. I want to know what percentage of the population is shorter or taller than I am. And if we go back to the the males, okay, notice seventy inches doesn't fall on one of those um, standard deviations. So what do I do? Well, what I need to do is I need to um, I need to find the area that is below where I am, and I can do that by using either the chart or the calculator. So if I use the chart, um, what I need to find out is I need to find out. Let me go to the chart here real quick. Hold on. Okay, now I've got the chart back up. What I need on the chart is I need my z-score in order to do this because everything is based on z-score to find your area. So if we go back to our problem, notice our problem 
did not give us a z-score. So what I need to ask is I need to ask, what is my z-score? So how do we find a z-score? Well, a z-score, let's go to the second one here real quick, is x minus x bar over sx. Or in other words, for this problem, your height, or the data point that you're interested in, minus the mean over the standard deviation. And you'll see that these are ones that, values that we've seen before. So in, our, in my case, my height was 70, my mean was 69, and my standard deviation was 2.25. So if I go to my calculator, 70 minus 69 is 1. 1 divided by 2.25 is about 0.444. Round it off. So that's my z-score. So now, can I use my z-score to think about what's happening? Sure, I go back to my picture. Okay, so my picture for this case. All right, I know I'm here between zero and one standard deviation. Okay, and I want to know what percentage of the population is shorter than I am, and what what percentage of the population is taller than I am. All righty. So from the chart, if I have a z-score of 0.44, let's say, and we go to our chart. 0.44 is down here, and I have an area of 0.17. So, from the chart, for shorter, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have 0.17 that's here between my z value and 0 or between my z-value and the and mean, 0.17, plus this extra 50% that is to the left of the mean. So plus 0.5, and that gives me 0.67, or 67% of the population is shorter than I am. Well, what's going to be taller? All right, that's going to be pretty clean, easy. I can just say I know I, there's 100% minus the 0.67 that are shorter than I am. So that's going to give me 0.33 are taller than I am. All right. Um, so now let's see if we can figure that on the calculator. Remember for the calculator, we're going to put in normal CDF. And then we are going to put in the low value. And if we look at shorter than, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from negative infinity up to what I'm interested in, which is my height, which is 70. Since I'm not dealing with a standard normal now, I need to actually put in what my mean and what my standard deviation are. So if I go back to my heights for males, my mean is 69, and my standard deviation okay, is 2.25. So I'm going to have to plug all of that in to my calculator. So let's do that see if I get 67%. Um, so on the calculator, I go to distribution, normal CDF. I'm going to get um, negative 1 EE99, comma 70, comma 69, comma 2.25. And voila, I get 67%. Alrighty. Notice you could also um, do the same thing, only you could go from 70 to 1 EE99 using 69 as our mean and 2.25. And what do we get? Well, that rounds off to 33%. Okay, so either way is fine. You just have to kind of think through uh, what you're doing on that. And if you don't have a z-score, then you need to use this formula to find your z-score.
All right, and you can go ahead and, and do that as well for whatever your height is and see how you compare um, to the rest of the population out there. All right, so what percentage of the population of females is between 63 and 67.5 inches? Well, if we go back to our females, here was our females chart. If we have 63 and 67.5, notice those aren't on any of our standard deviations. So we've got two ways we could do that. All right, we could either use the chart or we could use the, um, the calculator. So if we use the calculator, we would say I want a normal CDF going from 63 to 67.5. My mean for females is 64. My standard deviation is 2. And let's see what that gives me here. So I'm going from 63 to 67.5. I have 64 for my mean. I have 2 for my standard deviation. And I get about 0.65. So about 65% of the folks um, are between um, those two heights. Alrighty. Now if we wanted to do that on the, on the uh, chart, notice what we need to do is we need to find the z-score for both of these. So the z-score for 63 would be 63 minus 67 or sorry, minus 64 over 2, which would be uh, negative 0.5. And my z-score for the other would be 67.5 minus 64 over 2, which is 1.75. Then I would need to do two things. I would need to find out the area between 0 and negative 0.5 and the area between 0 and 1.75. So I remembered to leave this time. So if we have a z-score of 0.5, we get a 0.192. And then a z-score of 1.75. Okay, it's going to be back up at the top. We get a 0.46, and we go back to this on the calculator, 0.192 plus 0.46 is 0.652, which is what we have. Okay. Uh, question four, what height are 75% of the population of males taller than? Um, we sometimes call that the 75th percentile. So how would we find that? Well, what that means is we want to know where is, we've got 50% are here, and we want to know where I have to go, what my z value is, are going out 25% in this direction, okay? So halfway out. So I could do that two ways. If I use the chart, right, I know the area is going to be 0.25. So if I go to an area of 0.25, looks like it's here, a z-score of about 0.67. So my z is about 0.67. And then I use my formula up here and say that equals the height I'm interested in minus the, the mean for the men, which is 69, over the standard deviation for the men, 2.25. And then I can solve that. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2.25 and then add 69 to both sides, and that'll give me my value. So 0.67 times 2.25 plus 69 gives me a height of about 70.5 inches. Or 
if I do it using the calculator, notice what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an inverse norm. Okay. And my inverse norm, remember we said that was the area to the left, so the area to the left is 0.75 and my mean is 69 and my standard deviation is 2.25 so when I do that I get 70.5 so I get the same thing both ways again I don't care which way you do it um, as long as you're okay on doing that and then last question a Yavapai College volleyball player, female, is 6 feet 2 inches tall, and a Yavapai College basketball player, male, is 6 foot 5 inches tall. Based on the distributions above, who is taller in relation to the distribution of heights based on gender? Well, the way we, we check that is we check that with z-scores. All right, so we can find the z-score of each of these each of these players. So for the female, if she's six foot two, that would be six foot is six times twelve, which is seventy-two, plus another two, which would be seventy-four inches. We would have seventy-four inches minus the mean for females, which is um, what did we say was the mean for females? Sixty-four over two. So that comes out to be a z-score of 5. Pretty tall. Um, if we do the males, all right, the male is 6 foot 5, which is going to be 3 inches taller, so that's going to be 77, minus the, um, the mean for the male, which is 69, over the standard deviation, which is 2.25. So if we do that, we get 8 divided by 2.25, which is going to be... 3.55. So which one is taller based on their gender? The female is. Okay, so it's a nice way of making comparisons as to how something did when you've got two different sets of normal distributions. You can use z-score to do that. So hopefully that helps give you an idea about normal distributions and, and how they work.